Truck it, I'm Dooner here with Michael Vincent, the dude. Hey, good Wednesday afternoon from Freight Alley. Bit of homecoming for me today. Yeah, Port of the Cleveland to Port you this of, morning. <laughs> Port of the go, Cleveland. Go over. We're gonna, today's going to be a very eclectic show. We have, uh, we're kind of going around the horn on everything in Freight, right? We'll be going yeah. to the Port of Cleveland, talking to their president and CEO, Will Friedman. We've very got cool. uh, Bobby Coffey Loy. He's the president and founder of LGBTQ Plus Truck Driver Network. George Abernathy, our former president here. He's now the president over at Emerge. Yeah. And of course, the Back the Truck Up gang. We got Rooster. We got Super Trucker. They'll be coming on to tell us, bring us around the horn and freight. But before we get to everything, I got to say, great job climbing the Salesforce Tower yesterday. Did you like that? I did. You were, you're like Spider-Man. <laughs> Using my webs. <laughs> Using my webs. Let's tip the bin, then we'll get to uh, we'll get to a little doom and gloom with Rachel Premack. All right, net zero emissions by 2035. That's the headline from AIT Worldwide Logistics Sustainability Report. But just one aspect of their overall commitment to corporate social responsibility, whether it's protecting the planet, nurturing the communities where we live and work, or ensuring high quality business continuity, AIT is taking action today to deliver a better tomorrow. Learn more at Tell Em, Dude. Hey, go to AITWorldwide.com immediately after this show. Let's do it. Rachel Premack, Editorial Director at Freight Waves. And where, are, are those like a bunch of books that are like pages first behind you? Yeah, there's some real books right behind me. I'm back <laughs> at the WeWork where we always have some interesting sort of fake decor going on. I like it. Did you so did, so did you watch the WeWork thing on Apple TV Plus? I have not. I will get to it. All right. Well, one of these days. Well, Rachel, last time we talked to you, we were talking about the bloodbath, and since then, you put out an article that said bloodbath for ye, but not bloodbath for thee. Let's get into it. What do you mean by all that? Yeah. So we've been seeing this. Um, you know, a few, a few kind of executives have mentioned this in recent earnings reports, uh, particularly uh, Warner's Derek Leathers uh, yesterday mentioned this. The idea is that large carriers will be doing okay during these next few, this next year or so that we're going to be seeing a freight downturn. Smaller carriers, not so much. So those who, uh, you know, rely on the spot market, they're going to see rates. They have. They've already see, been seeing rates decrease by around 22 percent since the beginning of this year. On top of that, we've seen really historic diesel uh, price increases. So, you know, these are sort of things that uh, small carriers are especially exposed to. I talked to one owner operator last week who said, "You know, I've already been forced to park my truck. I can't afford the increase in diesel prices." Uh, you know, along with the fact that spot market rates are falling. So we are already seeing drivers affected by the fall in spot rates with the rise of diesel. And to be sure, large carriers are also affected by the rise in diesel. But because they are more dependent on contract, uh, you know, contracts with uh, dedicated carriers or, de or dedicated shippers, um, they're just not going to be as affected by the decline in spot rates just because they have long-term contracts. Yeah, I mean, it's not that they won't be. It's just that the degree will not be as bad. That's, that is for certain. They'll see some downturn in uh – in their in their in their volumes as well as you'll see shippers starting to jump out of their uh, they'll start jumping out of their routing guides on purpose right because we just saw spot rates with fuel just drop below contract rates without fuel right right yeah and it is interesting because certain carriers are responding differently so I talked to one freight broker who said you know because spot rates have been fall falling I've mm -hmm. actually um, you know, slash some of my rates for shippers. I talked to another large contract carrier who said, or a large carrier that mostly, I think, fully depends on contract rate. He said, yeah, I've been increasing rates because we can't keep up with the price of diesel. So, you know, if you have sort of a long-term contract with certain shippers, you can negotiate, talk things out, um, you know, it's kind of reduce some of the volatility that we see but if you're more exposed to the spot market, you don't have a long-term relationship with your client. You are 
you're kind of riding the waves and the waves are, you know, particularly volatile in the trucking world and even more so in spot. And, you know, when you, when you think about all the sort of, um, uncertainties that we've seen in the past few years. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at a picture from your, your appearance last week on this show. Can you show that image up here? Yeah. <laughs> and I think we may have more cause we're continuing this trend. I mean, you mentioned <laughs> diesel here and we're looking at record high prices along with record low reserves. And you just mentioned the spot rates as well. Let's take a look at the spot market right now. Gun needs to loan and cliffhanger to help you out. If you're exposed to this right now, we dropped another four cents. It's down 93 cents. I believe since the peak, right? Michael sure, Vincent, yeah, we're almost at a dollar down. Uh, the seasonal comparisons are, obviously blown up. And I know a lot of people online, a lot of nerds online have been saying, uh, you know, I saw USA Truck had a really nice earnings report. So that means that small carriers are fine. But what's really going on right now this week? Right. So it's it, the, the so Craig Fuller, our, our CEO, mentioned this um, on Twitter today or yesterday. But uh, when you look at diesel specifically, you know, Rates or your your payment from freight would come, you know, it could come in 30 days if you if you do a factoring, it could come in sooner. But if you have to pay that extra dollar or two on diesel, you have to pay that right away. You can't push that down the line. That is that's the price you're paying, and you're paying it right away. And if you don't have the cash reserves, as many of these new owner operators lack, um, this could really this could really push your margins. And as I as I mentioned. People are already park parking their truck. They've parked it even before we saw these freight rates decline. Um, so yeah, the the increase in cost in diesel is definitely something that we've been following for the past week, and it's something that is already hurting um, small small trucking companies. Yeah, those smaller, especially on the spot rates, they don't have a fuel surcharge table to make up that that gap. You know, I mean, when they when the when right. the uh, when the rack price or the wholesale goes up quickly. It does squeeze the margin on the bigger and the larger enterprise carriers, even though they have those because the retail doesn't respond quite as much, which is what the fuel surcharge table is on, not on the wholesale, right? So it does squeeze that margin. But when it stays or starts to smooth out, things get a little bit better for them. Even though they're getting squeezed a little bit, they they're definitely can make money or help themselves on that spread between the retail and the wholesale rack. Uh, which is which is an interesting thing that's going on. But what are what are you working on uh, coming up soon? You're, you're talking are our uh, uh, enterprise fleets starting to dump some of their equipment or what? Yeah. So we've just been seeing over the past year that large trucking companies have been selling more and more of their mm -hmm. of their tractors, especially uh, given the fact that they have lost so many drivers to, you know, the owner operator side or maybe drivers retiring or just, you know, not wanting to be out during COVID. They've been able to save up their, they've been able to build up savings and maybe don't need to work. So, um, you know, it's that, that truck driver shortage coming back. Um, and the large carriers have been able to kind of weather this by selling old equipment. Um, so right now, three year, Three-year-old three year used pr trucks are twice as much as what mm. they would have cost at this time last year. Uh, at this time last year, you you could sell them for around seventy thousand, and now they are currently selling for more than one hundred forty thousand. Um, so, if you have a bunch of old trucks, this is really the time to sell. Um, and the great thing about running a giant public trucking company is that you do have a bunch of trucks, and it's. Um, They've been able to really, you know, lower their operating ratio and just generally drum up some more cash by selling some of these old tractors. You know what I've been noticing in my inbox, too? Not just uh, inland equipment, not just trucking equipment, but containers, too. Oh, yeah. 40s and 20s every single day. You might have seen them in our media inbox on Freightways, but I'm seeing more and more solicitations just to dump all these containers that people had, and the prices are going lower and lower. Right, right, because because of the all the manufacturing backlogs we've seen, um, used trucks in some cases cost even more than new trucks just because you could actually get them right away, whereas new trucks, you might not be seeing that for months, a year. <laughs> a lot of OEMs have already stopped taking orders for 2022. 
Yeah, I mean, we were waiting to see when this when the sell off was going to happen. As long as volume stayed high and there was lots of stuff to go out there and keep that that capacity on the on the road, you keep those you keep those trucks rolling. That's why, you know, a lot of people trying to get into it. Those prices went up, especially with manufacturing down. Now they're starting to dump it. Those prices are going to are going to they're going to drop. So a lot of them are getting ahead of that game by dumping that by dumping that uh, the, that equipment that is right there. Hey, Rachel, what are you excited about coming up at Future Supply Chain in Arkansas next week? Oh, man. I talked to some of the guys who I'm talking to uh, on stage next week. Um, so I'll be talking to uh, a senior logistics manager at, at uh, Wayfair. So Hold on. We'll is, it these guys? About- is it these guys? Show, show that picture. Is it, is it, is, no, it's not these guys. <laughs> it's not these guys here. Is that the panel? Everyone <laughs> talking to is, is on the, uh, the, highest, uh, the highest intelligence uh part of that bell curve so only <laughs> only good conversations coming up at, at, uh, at only, the great waves conference only uh, the best and brightest in Arkansas. well rachel yeah. thank you so much for joining us today everyone go out and get modes it'll be out what'd you say later today tomorrow thursday morning so thursday morning. greatwaves.com slash modes sweet, sweet. Fra- all right have fun back at your we work we'll let you get back to it all right thanks so much all right let's take awesome a uh, let's take a look at the port of cleveland in oh. a little video right here Cleveland is one of the nation's great manufacturing centers. We are a port city. We've always been a port city. And every year, as soon as the ice breaks, the Port of Cleveland reopens for the world. We are proud to welcome the first ships of the season to the heart of Great Lakes shipping. We provide 3.5 billion in economic activity annually and bring 20,000 jobs to the region. We are ready for what's next. Beautiful. Wow. Well, now we have William Friedman, the president and CEO over at Port of Cleveland. Will, thanks so much for coming on the show and uh, tell us a little bit about your port today. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to join you. How's that? So, How's... As you saw in that video, um, we are a Great Lakes port, which um, you may not talk about that much on your show. So I'm, I'm happy to be here to to uh, to change that. And um, <laughs> we handle um, a pretty diverse range of cargoes here. We're primarily a break bulk and a bulk port, um, but we're um, growing our container business. We have a small container service that our port actually started back in 2014 with Europe. It's the only um, it's the only container service on the Great Lakes. Uh, there's a long story that uh, we don't have enough time to go into, but um, unfortunately, uh, containers bypassed the Great Lakes uh, years ago. And uh, but we are trying to prove that um, it's never too late and bring uh, bring containers back and serve shippers here in the heartland better. So, Will, you, containers are there in Cleveland. It's the only one on the Great Lakes. What are the other things that come through there? Is it mostly uh, ores? Is that what it is? Ores and grain and that type of stuff? Yeah, on a tonnage basis, um, iron ore is the number one commodity. Um, in terms of steel making historically and still today, iron ore is mined uh, mostly up in northern Minnesota uh, in the iron ore range and somewhat in northern Michigan. And then it's um, moved by um, – Bulkers, uh, Lakers, we call them down here to Cleveland and other cities that have um, integrated steel mills. And, and so that trade is still robust. We'll handle about three or four million tons of iron ore here uh, annually. Um, we have other um, natural resource based uh, commodities that move around here, like salt and cement and stone, uh, aggregates for construction. Um, another million or so tons of those commodities. And then on the brick bulk side, it's mostly steel. It's mostly inbound steel from Europe, grades of steel that um, are not produced uh, in, enough, um, in, in enough quantity here in, in the U.S. And then they go into manufacturing um, within usually 100 miles or so, maybe 200 miles of, of Cleveland. So uh, you know, very important supply chain uh, right into manufacturing and supports a lot of jobs. So, and we'll handle probably four to 500,000 tons of um, mostly cold and hot rolled steel from, from mills in Europe. 
Hey, well, let me ask you something. So you've been with uh, ports almost in your entire adult life. What drew you to the water? Yeah, I, I have been. Um, I, I grew up in Indianapolis, which is a little ironic since it's a landlocked place. Uh, and then I fell into this business coming out of a graduate program. Um, just got lucky and, and scored a job with uh, Indiana ports at the time. Uh, this is, this was a while ago. Uh <laughs> back in the late 80s. And then I spent the 90s in the, at the Port of Seattle and, and sort of cut my teeth on, um, you know, at a big West Coast port. And um, then I uh, went back to Indiana and took over Indiana ports in my, in my late 30s. Um, that's, a, that's a port system with two ports down the Ohio River and one up on Lake Michigan. Um, and then I went to work for a, a distribution um, a supply chain logistics real estate developer, a company called Duke, one of one of the big ones actually, based in India, and spent five years helping them buying sites to build DCs and fulfillment centers all over the country, ports and intermodal locations. And then came back into the port industry here in Cleveland and and uh, back in twenty ten. And uh, so I've kind of done it all. So, uh, Will, can you talk to, talk to us a little bit more about the volume there and in, in, in the infrastructure there at the Port of Cleveland? So how many, how many vessels come in and call in there in a year, and what's that turn like? So international ships that are using the St. Lawrence Seaway to get to us, um, usually from Europe, but could be from anywhere, we probably get about 100 vessel calls a season on the international side, roughly. On the, on the um, domestic and, and in Canada trade here that's within the Great Lakes, um, that's a much bigger number. That's probably closer to a thousand because we're, it's a pretty steady flow um, of, of the iron ore in particular to keep the mill going. So, you know, we were pretty busy here during our season. Mm-hmm. Things tend to shut down in the winter. The St. Lawrence Seaway does close in the winter. Um, and then for the most part, uh, lake shipping will close down because of ice, although there is some ice breaking. Um, so, but we've got plenty of capacity. The good news is for us is that unlike a lot of the very congested coastal ports today, um, we've got more room for cargo. We've got more capacity today. So we're looking to be a reliever. Uh, we're marketing our port as a reliever for the problems that are occurring both East coast and West coast right now. Uh, the seaway itself has plenty of capacity and, um, we got a lot of shippers interested. Our problem is on the carrier side. We're, you know, we're get, getting ships and getting carriers to come into the system is is usually the uh, it's usually mm-hmm. our difficulty. Well, let's uh, promote that a little bit to these carriers and these shippers here. What is the major st- strategic advantage of being in the Great Lakes? So the big strategic advantage is you get a ship all the way into the heartland of America. So you get closer to the origin or the destination point. Um, if you're serving manufacturing agricultural or the consumer base here in our heartland, just a, a one data point I'll throw out to you. The states and provinces that border the great lakes, two provinces, eight great lake states, that's a $6 trillion economy. If you add up the economies of just those states and provinces, it's one of the largest economies in the world. So here we are right in the middle of that, and we have this deep water navigation system that is just drastically underutilized. Um, so and we know the costs are competitive because the service we started is competing today. Um, transit time, believe it or not, is better. We can beat from Europe, let's say from Germany to Cleveland, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, our service can beat the transit time um, compared to the East Coast and the traditional routing. So cost, transit time, you cut out most of the inland leg, which is the expensive leg, either intermodal or truck, and, and you can be within you know a few hours of your customer. We're also small. You can keep visibility on your cargo. You know Our terminal operator here, the carrier that serves our port, our port authority itself, you can pick up the phone and call us and, you know, we can tell you where your load is. You know, we'll give you very customized service here because uh, we're small and we can do that. 
Yeah, I guess the biggest, uh, yeah, if you got the balance inbound and outbound, it makes perfect sense. When you're looking at just distance, it doesn't, but then when you talk about the delays and the expense of over-the-road trucking, et cetera, that makes a ton of sense. With with the with the uh, commodities that uh, you handle there, have you saw any, uh, have you seen any major challenges through the past two years with the with the backups and, and volume surging and that type of thing? Were you immune to that type of thing? No, we really were immune to that sort of thing because, as I said, you know, we we have capacity to spare here. Um, And and we could have grown, you know, we grew, we basically doubled our container volume last year. But, you know, it was really just getting ships. I mean, right now, um, a company called Spleet Off, they're not a household name. They're not one of the, you know, major alliance carriers in in the container trade. They're a brick bulk, uh, sort of a tramp, you know, more of a tramp operator. But they, they run our Cleveland Europe Express service. That's our uh, service between Cleveland and, um, and Antwerp. And they're trying to find another ship. If they could get a hold of a small container ship um, for this trade right now, um, they'd bring on another ship. So that's really the impediment for our growth right now is, um, you know, getting the tonnage in here so we, so we could uh, – so we could – uh, accept more cargo. And you mentioned exports and, and, and balance, and that's important to us too. We really started our, our Europe Express service so we could better serve exporters here who frankly have been underserved. Um, and, and, you know, we all know there's a lot of uh, complaining going on uh, right now. Yeah, that's uh, true. Formal, formal and informal uh, and Congress is looking at, you know, denial of service and all those issues. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's your outlook for the port for the rest of the year? Uh, we think it's going to be a good year. We, we think our our container volumes will continue to grow. We think our steel volumes will be back, to kind of pre-pandemic normal levels. Um, we're starting a we're building out a, a liquid bulk transfer facility right now. We're going to start receiving small tanker ships filled with oleo, uh, basically, basically vegetable oil. Uh, uh, coming in here for a, a large importer here in the Cleveland area. That's brand new business for us. That's new to the Great Lakes. So we're excited about that. Um, iron ore volumes are, are, are going to be good. Um, you know, our steel mill here is running full blast and uh, we're, we're busy. Okay. Yeah. Hey, first time on and from Cleveland. He's got to go. He's got to go to the wheel of stupid questions, wheel. right? I mean, I'm a Cleveland native myself, so uh, where you're going to let you go. I'm going to roll, right. roll the wheel here real quick on you. What do you got? All right, here we go. Are you ready? What bird yeah. is the most suspicious? Oh boy, man! You're you're you're. Um, a lot of people tell you they're all suspicious, but um, <laughs> hmm. I'd have to say the crow. You know, the crow is not a very trustworthy bird. Yeah. yeah. See, being from Cleveland, growing up in the eighty or growing up in the seventies, I, I would say the buzzard. If you get my meaning, the buzzard. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Hinkley. They we, come we to roost in Hinkley. We know what they're up to, though. Those crows. <laughs> never know. Yeah, yes. when they're smart too, they can use tools. Well, hey, Will, <laughs> uh, where do people go to learn more about the port? Uh, go to our website or follow us. You know, we're, we're pretty active on social media and, um, follow our port, um, and follow me and we're out there. That's probably the best way to, to keep, keep track of what we're doing. That, that video you showed at the beginning, we, you know, we like to produce those on a periodic basis and, um, you, you know, we're, uh, we kind of punch above our weight on social media. So, uh, please follow Okay. Hey, great. Right Thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me. Yep. Good time. Excellent stuff. All right. Let's go to Bobby Coffey, Lloyd, president and founder of LGBTQ Plus Truck Driver Network. Bobby, thanks for spending a little time with us today on this Wednesday. Hey, how are you guys doing? What, what part of the world uh, are you joining us from? Where are you hanging out right now? Um, we're down here in Newport Ritchie, Florida. And uh, kind of just enjoying some home time, getting ready to go to Bush Gardens for a little bit and Tarpon Springs and kind of run around. Um, whenever we're on the road, we kind of like to come home and just relax. So, Yeah, nice area of the country. I, I, I lived near there for a while, did a lot of, bit, a lot of work down there. So tell us about the, tell us about the, the network there. How, what's it about and how many members you guys got? Um, right now, uh, 
you know, with LGBTQ plus truck driver network, we um, are basically just trying to form and bridge that gap between drivers and the LGBT community. Um, right now, there's a little over 7,000. Um, one of the, lit- the latest polls said there's a little, about, a little bit over 14,000 drivers. The page itself is right around 1,300. Um, but we, if you look at the analytics, there's a lot of people that um, don't like the page because they're we deal with a lot of people who um, are afraid others will see that they like the page. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot more people um, that follow the page versus liking the page. So, um, but you know, we're just, it's, it's just starting out. It's less than a year right now. And um, what we're just trying to do is just bridge that gap in the community, letting people know that there's um, it, it's all drivers means all it's, it's really that simple. Um, we're all doing the same thing. We all are pulling the same type of loads and, um, and doing the same type of work. And so um, I'm just uh, trying to get uh, that little bit of an edge, like, you know, just cut off a little bit to where people can see that, you know, and open it up that, to where people can see that people are just the same. We're all the same. We're supporting our families and friends and whatever it, your situation may be, but we're all out there driving the same. Um, we also ha- actually have a, another part that we do, which is LGBTQ vetted. And um, what we do that for is we vet companies and um, as LGBTQ friendly. So um, a lot of companies, we, can, we um, have categorized them as having insurance for people who are LGBTQ or um, just it, so on and so on. It, it, it's so big, like as, as we just keep snowballing to more and more things. So, um, well, hey, Bobby, and let, then we let, have a. It's Bobby, let me ask idea. you something. What are what are some of the challenges that LGBTQ drivers face right now in the trucking community? There's many challenges. I mean, there's a lot of people who have not opened their mind yet to even hiring people who are of the LGBTQ, and um, it's kind of sad that that happens. But um, you know, that's where we're trying to just educate people. You know, on uh, I don't want nothing special. I want nothing special to be opened up for me. I do the same job as everyone else. So it's it's that simple. But yet so many people make it so complicated because they want to focus on um, not me as a driver. They want to focus on my personal life and who I choose to be with. So um, that's one of the biggest things. And, and you wouldn't think in our day and age people would be refused for employment based on sexuality or sexual orientation. Um, but it still happens. So, uh, we're trying to help with that and educate others. Um, even providing educational videos that actually go to, um, companies that they can play during your orientation process. So we've got a list of companies that's going to start doing that here, here soon. And, uh, just help with that whole process. Yeah, I think I think it's great stuff. I applaud your your efforts there. I love the vetting process of that and almost certifying companies. Uh, when you're going through that process of vetting them and working with other drivers and stuff like that and people that you're trying to make more aware of, of the situation there and how to help, what are some of those things that you really wish that people out there were, understood a little bit better or were more aware of? Um, well, I think, first of all, you know, everybody instantly, one of the, one of the comments that almost always pops up, whether I'm doing an article or, or just being interviewed, somebody instantly says, um, you know, we don't want to know who you're sleeping with. Well, I don't want to know who you're sleeping with either. You know, it doesn't matter to me. We're just doing our job, you know, um, as crappy as some of those days may be, you know, um, I'm pulling the same load that you don't want to pull, you know, everyone has those days. So I really think that if it starts with something just simplistic and basic as I'm just doing the same job as you, you know, um, and if we start there, that's when we can grow into being more. Um, I just, uh, it's all through education and awareness and diversity and just people being themselves and, and drivers like to say the comment all the time, you know, stay in your own lane driver. And, um, that goes both ways. It, mm-hmm. you know, it really, it, it should, makes a lot of sense. Least. Bobby, how did you, uh, I noticed the XBO logo on the, the truck. How did you get the partnership with XBO? XBO is actually one of the most uh, diverse companies um, that you really could work for. Um, I do know that they are trying to uh, weed out a little bit of their own problems within XBO as a lot of the, um, if you're over the road, it's way more friendlier, it seems. 
but um, when it comes to uh, local terminals, they're trying to diversify all of it as much as possible. But they have their own diversity department. They have been very active when it comes to parades and festivals and events. So um, XBO was really excited about doing this adventure. And then the truck I actually have is through Cliffside Transportation. And Cliffside is actually leased to XBO. So um, our truck, you know, he was completely on board as an owner to uh, to support us. Now the truck is only in its first phase. Um, we're actually getting a, um, a newer truck than this one. This one's a 2020. Um, so that's why the full thing is not done, but it's going to end up being an educational awareness truck where just on the both sides of the cab, um, well, back there, it's going to basically be monumental moments in time of LGBTQ history, uh, black and white pictures of like Stonewall riots and Matthew Shepard and, um, just on and on and on of, of monumental people within uh, gay history. And so um, that's the that's what we want to do with the truck, basically. And then we have another program that we've actually been doing. So um, it, is called, it is basically a driver memorial program. And uh, I, lost a, I lost a really close friend at the beginning of the year um, last year. And... Uh, it's hard. A lot of people don't think about when people leave home. A lot of people don't come home. Um, last mm -hmm. year, it was 3,276 people, wow. uh, 76 CDL drivers that left home and didn't come back to their loved ones. So we actually do a driver memorial program and have teamed up with a couple other people who get drivers home for their families. And uh, so basically, we send a letter of condolence, um, a personalized T-shirt and like a car charm with the drivers pictures and stuff on it because I, I just was like I can't accept all these drivers passing away and there not be some sort of a driving someone re still reaching out I don't know I guess I just have a really big heart and um when I got I, I didn't think about it until I lost my best friend yeah. so uh he was a driver out here and a really big ally to our community him and his wife and uh when he passed away it really opened that door of I didn't think about when someone dies, I just, yeah. it's something I guess you don't want to think about when on the road. So Bobby, bef bef before we let you before and, and, and powerful words, thank you for saying that before we let mm -hmm. you go for drivers out there or family members of drivers who may be hearing this and it's resonating with them and they are looking for a group for some support or a network to be a part of, where do mm -hmm. we send them to? Well, um, you can find us on LGBTQ truck driver network.com. And, um, if you want to be a vetted company, um, it's also lgbtqvetted.com. And then we have a, a, a large Facebook group, which is LGBTQ plus truck driver network. Um, and a podcast. And I I also like too. <laughs> yeah. And then big gay trucker, the podcast. And so, um, but yeah, uh, just trying to do a bunch of fun things. And, you know, like we, we attended Matt's this year and, uh, we, and it was the first time, even that was a thing, a really big thing for me because I was like in 50 years, there's never been an LGBTQ group to be on the floor and have a booth. And so that was pretty awesome to be able to do that. I didn't think that we would run out of stuff so fast, but believe it or not, within a day and a half, we had over 1500 like giveaway stuff that was all gay pride and LGBTQ related and from awesome. t-shirts to pins, to hats, and it was gone within the first day and a half. So, um, it's his, uh, it's his first time on the show. Really Bobby, it's your first time on the show. You got to send him the wheel, Michael Vincent. Oh, oh we he, already have a question for you. We already have the question. We already, <laughs> we already, we already spun it. I think by uh, looking at behind you, you've got an opinion on this. So, Bobby, what bird is the most suspicious? Suspicious? Um, an ostrich? Oh, yeah, Ooh, yeah. Demos What's too. he hiding his head for? What's yeah. that all about? That is very suspicious. <laughs> That's a exactly. suspicious. I would say an ostrich. I mean, cause they're kind of weird, but then they also can run. I don't know. They, they run really fast, and I, that scares me because I've, I've seen people like those videos on TikTok where people get beat up by ostriches. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're basically <laughs> like we'll velociraptors. They basically, they basically are. Even if you hide in yeah. the kitchen, they can open doors and stuff. Yeah, velociraptors. Like, <laughs> hey, Bobby, one more time. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. We appreciate uh, you telling us all about this and the shade you threw on the ostrich. Yeah. 
<laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank you all. Take it easy. That's all awesome. right. Your customers and investors want to know that your company is serious about sustainability. Oh, yeah, they do. Show them the depth of your commitment when you rely on AIT Worldwide Logistics for your freight forwarding needs. From Scope 3 carbon footprint reporting to calculating emissions at the transaction level, partnering with AIT sends a clear message to stakeholders. You mean business when it comes to sustainability. Learn more at AITWorldwide.com. You better believe it. And what kind of trust? Trucking company needs to be productive, safe, and profitable to stay in business. Yours them. does. That's why the folks who built trucking.com just rebranded a motive. Go safe, go productive, go profitable, go motive.com. That's go motive.com. Com. You look like you need a history lesson, Michael Vincent. For over 35 <laughs> years, Fleetworthy Solutions has provided a single source of solutions to help monitor and manage DOT compliance while mitigating risk for private and for hire carriers. With advanced technologies and exceptional client services, Fleetworthy becomes an extension of your team to make your company go beyond compliant. <laughs> All right, let's talk to George Abernathy. He's the president over at Emerge. He used to be the president over here. And last time we saw him, I gave him a cowbell. You did. Yeah. It was awesome. I, I, I teared up. Yeah, and since then, the Red Sox have been terrible. Hey, George, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hey, 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 boys. It's right there here. There it okay. is. It. All right. All right. I love it. It looks good. Oh, it's right back there. It's always near to my heart. You know what? I mean, it has been a while. It's May the 4th be with you. I, I could kiss you guys, but I think I'd rather kiss a Wookiee. So now, that's for you, Dooner. <laughs> so, I was, so I went to Disney at the beginning of March, right? And I went to, I I went to Disney World. I went to uh, the Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Epcot. When's the last time you've been? And uh, what was your opinion? Because I was really annoyed by like the genie passes. I thought it was a big ripoff. Um, uh, you guys will remember, height of COVID, uh, we went... Uh, in the uh, winter break uh, after Christmas of 20. Uh, so uh, the genie pass, um, I've got a son who's very Disney centric and shares your opinion. I will say I felt like it was the safest place on earth on top of the happiest place on earth back when, uh, uh, when COVID was going on. But uh, I think your genie pass opinions are shared broadly. Awesome. <laughs> so too, the Star Wars, the hotel too. That Star Wars hotel is getting just like dunked on all over uh, the six thousand oh, dollars. Really? Oh, hotel. big time! Well, I, you know, I, I think I've got you know better things that I could do with thirty five hundred bucks a night or whatever it is. Whoa! You know? okay. So, and I do, I do want to say, I do want to say thank you for the Red Sox hat. I'm, I'm always willing to come on and talk about right after a big Celtics victory. What's going to be a big Bruins victory tonight? Sorry to any of your, your, your great viewers and listeners down in North Carolina or. In Hartford, Dooner, you're going to know why I would say that. And and Michael, what you're doing mm. uh, with all the guitar accessories and the guitar picks and all is really great stuff. So it's wonderful to see you, boys. Yeah, well, you <laughs> appreciate know, I, that very much, George. <laughs> could it, Red Sox may have just started a winning streak with that win over the Angels yesterday. They really hey, congratulations, hey, hey, boy, hey, one in a row. <laughs> well, hey, all, all my all my optimization algorithmic friends tell me that you know one is a trend, so we'll take it. There you well, go. Well, George, Freight Waves throw some amazing events, and they can be a little dangerous. I almost got fired at my first one. Let's take a look at this clip. <laughs> so let's give it up for Chad. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> do you want me to? Dooner with, with, do me... with the cowbell. Dooner with the Oh, they cut off the whole part. They <laughs> cut off the whole reaction. <laughs> you guys get the end of that? What happened uh, here? Why do they cut that off? Why do they cut? You that know, off? I think before you stopped ringing, that it made it all the way out into the lobby. Dude, yeah, well, it was like <laughs> we got a little bit of everything going on here. Uh, <laughs> George, what's your code, greatest? Code blue, code blue. Dooner's ringing the cowbell. Yeah, code blue. <laughs> exactly. What is your uh, greatest uh, freight waves event memory? Um, it's got to be, um, and there's so many of them. And you're so right. And what freight waves has been able to do in the events, and I'm so excited about what going to go on next week at the future supply chain but seeing the dude but in his pre previous persona michael vincent and our dearly departed um god bless uh ben murphy for um for everything he gave to freight waves seeing ben and michael on stage with sonar in uh may of 18 um, turning uh, what was garbage exhaust data into something, think about it, that that data 
And the boot. <laughs> what was that, that? That data. I don't know what that was, but that data and Craig Fuller's media persona has turned into a market influencer for sure. So seeing Ben and Michael up on stage with what, we were delivering to the world in sonar and that data that's that's my that's my fondest memory yeah, that was that was quite an exciting time that was it's what it's my obviously my fondest memory being with with, with ben uh, who did give so much to this stuff yeah he 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 almost he was almost passed out he was so nervous getting up on that <laughs> stage and you know I, I felt pretty good walking up there but you know we had the we had the wi-fi issues there and sonar wasn't working the moment we, before we walked up on that stage. So we didn't know if it was going to – he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm, I got a script. I'm rolling, brother. Just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> well, that may Michael, – Michael or the dude, sorry. That may be the best counsel that we can give and emerge is, you know, really excited about doing a demo next week um, at the Future Supply Chain. It may be the best counsel that you can give to somebody who's doing a demo – if something doesn't go well in that very significant seven minutes that is so important to the growth of your product and how it's going to be viewed, if something goes wrong, just do what we were ready to do back in 2018. Blame it on the Internet. That's right. <laughs> George, what do, we have to, what do we have to look forward to from Emerge at this event? Um, we're really excited. Uh, we've, we've got, uh, we do have a demo, and uh, we'll be unveiling our, uh, our benchmarking capability um, it's really cool to have the tagline and the elevator story be the same thing about a company and with re reinventing freight procurement. That's what Emerge is from a tagline. And that's also what our elevator story is. Somebody asked me, what does Emerge do? And we're reinventing freight procurement and taking it to the next step, which is naturally benchmarking and benchmarking in a new way, using the freshest data, data from some of our partners like Freight Waves, uh, that allows us to give you guidance and, you know, has the market ever been more volatile? If mm. I hear, I'm sure we'll hear it next week, guys, we're going to hear the new normal, the newer normal, and the newest more normal. So let's just assume that volatility is here to stay and having the kind of benchmarking that uh, an eMERGE can do and then the ability to execute off of that to, to describe what what lanes, what markets, what seasons you should be taking your taking your freight into the market. And given that the market is so volatile, um, that's that's really what's exciting is that this benchmarking is going to tell you what to bid, when to bid it, how long to bid it for uh, the kind of things that will really turn upside down what have historically been the best practices around freight procurement. Now, George, if they deputize me to cowbell anybody who says a certain word or phrase at no, this, which what, which word or phrase are we cowbelling at the future of supply chain? Boy, uh, you want to cowbell? Uh, can I can I have the the entire? It's almost my, like my Latin back in the day. Can I have new normal, newer normal, and newest normal, and just call it call it out and say? volatility is here to stay volatility is our friend if we do it right but if i hear one more person say we're in the new normal i'm going to show them your i'm going to show them the 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 sonar charts that describe there is no such thing as normal because volatility is a constant yeah i haven't seen normal since we started it in 2018 when i think back before that it wasn't normal before that either no exactly <laughs> Nothing right normal exactly about. right 100 percent. nothing's normal about it which is why you know talking to the what the truck guy is about normal I, that's a word that's never been used to describe my two boys anytime well george we really look forward to seeing you there it's going to be uh monday and tuesday over in northwest arkansas uh when are you flying will you be in on sunday you're going to be a monday going in going in on sunday uh i get to do a fireside chat um through my time at Freightways, I think this will be my 1,000th fireside chat, but uh, I've been able to talk to the industry leaders. I get to talk to one first thing on Monday with Andrew Leto, uh, founder uh, of Emerge. So I'm uh, going to get his take on the market and uh, how to best uh, do that. And then Emerge is actually sponsoring the cocktail hour. So uh, not that any of the three of us have ever seen a cocktail with our name on it mm -hmm. or uh, enjoyed the company of others who are doing so. So uh, we'll be We'll be uh, sponsoring the cocktail hour as well as doing a demo and uh, just looking forward to I'm 
I'm thrilled that we're all going to get back together in person, the future of the supply chain, the vision of what, you know, what Craig had, what Shelly Simpson, what I was thinking about doing and you guys are delivering is really exciting. Yeah, George, you know, I mean, you look great on this virtual world, but we can't wait to see you uh, in person on Sunday. So we'll catch you up in uh, Arkansas. We'll see you soon. Thanks for coming on today. See you boys in Arkansas. We'll call the hogs together. Take care. Absolutely. Right Peace. Absolutely. Best way to get a cheap pop out there. I got to teach these new gentlemen that. It's Rooster and Super Trucker Justin Martin. Back to truckup.com's new team. Let's bring the boys up. Bring them up. Yeah. Uh, Coming any minute nope. now. There it is. There he is. Hey! Yeah. hey live in the <laughs> What's, I like your shirt. Are those um, jalapeno peppers? Uh, various hot peppers and some little pepper sauce bottles. Uh, delicious. Well, uh, I, and speaking of appetizing gentlemen, we also have Super Trucker here. We do. There Super he is. Tr- Hello, hey, sir. Your, your green screen's looking nice. You've been putting it to good use on <laughs> TikTok lately. You've been, uh, you, this man has like, know, he had 100,000 views on one news TikTok he did last head. week. He's hitting like 30,000 on these other ones. So one, he's doing a wonderful job out there. Yeah. You got to start branding on your head. You're selling your selling the real oh, estate like on real your head for branding. Yeah. The oh, there's plenty of plenty of real estate. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, gentlemen, gentlemen, back to truckup.com. It's been up for a few weeks now. Stories about five, six stories been popping up there every day. Let's take a look at a video from this story, and then Rooster will tell us what we were what we were watching. Oh, like this soundtrack is like what used yeah. to be on backyard wrestling tapes. I love it. In like 1998 and 1990 when I would get them for Christmas. Like that's just chunky guitar. Like, so what is happening? Rooster, what's going on here? What are we looking at? Uh, a little uh, grand theft going on out here from San Bernardino on the 24th. Uh, fine gentleman right there uh, was sitting on his front porch. Uh, the poor US uh, J.B. Hunt driver pulled in was a uh, Unfortunately, met with a uh, little street rally going on. Everybody cutting donuts and all that. Uh, the gentleman's name is Victor Manuel Alanis. Police are looking for him. He's got a uh, $200,000 warrant on a prior robbery. Now you add on the uh, stuff from there. And, uh, you know, just doing our job, a little crime and punishment. You know, uh, wanted to send this guy to Hotel California ASAP. Yeah, so this guy's still out, huh? Uh, last I have checked, and I've been keeping an eye on it. Unbelievable. Wow. So he starts this whole thing that near turns into a riot. The guy goes to the hospital. There's a truck. Now, let me ask you guys. So, Justin, uh, you ever find yourself in a hairy sort of like crowd control type of situation like this? Uh, not recently. Uh, you know, a couple summers ago when the riots were happening, um, I would just turn the news on Philadelphia, and if there was something happening, i just call out of work sick that day oh wow yes yeah, oh yeah move. just to avoid it completely oh yeah that's right because you were you were driving truck did they give you i mean did you feel like you had the ability to just say no i'm not going into that area oh absolutely yeah anytime uh you know you feel like you're not uh safe you know your life is more important than your freight so it can always get there the next day and now uh, rooster you said so they're still looking for this guy he's still out there so everybody keep your eye out for this uh this container thief took off with some couches and some stuff like that now let me ask you guys should i do this to my wife's prius let's take a look at this video i don't know where i can get some power at i gotta charge this thing <laughs> oh yeah there's a good plug right down the road it's been down on battery power i don't What in the hell? <laughs> what in the- <laughs> you know, maybe if this was last year, the year before, I could have picked up those great rates on the hotshot loads. Maybe not yeah. so. Uh, maybe not so much <laughs> now. Um, which one are you, J- Justin? Were you the one who found this video? What are we looking at here? Yeah, so you know, diesel's as high as it's been ever, and uh, times are getting tough. So modern problems require or modern solutions. And this guy thought it would be funny to just slap together a little steel plate on top of his Prius and put a gooseneck trailer on top and. Uh, yeah, he has a little fun with it, but obviously you're not going to carry any any kind of weight on that. And if you look closely enough, all the roads he's on, they're all closed. So you know, it's all in good fun. Yeah, but the maneuverability is unbelievable with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you? He has he has one road where it's it's a dead end, and he just stops, does a complete you know three corner turn, and just turns the whole thing around. I just I'm watching that, just getting mad. <laughs> well, you know, I've I've driven the uh, the wife's Prius quite frequently, and uh, it doesn't have like Tesla like pickup. It has um, 
pray to God you'll get up to speed in time before you get crushed by that semi. Uh, oh, is that right? The other Squeezes those batteries kind of pretty speed. hard to get it going. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is this is a great story. This is a hero story that was in the news up on backthetruckup.com yesterday. Rooster, tell us what this Marine did for this Swift driver. Ooh. Yeah, the Marine Corps veteran didn't, couldn't get his name. Uh, apparently... The accident's still in an investigation, but it looks like he took the corner too fast, laid the truck over. Uh, truck caught on fire. A uh, Marine Corps v- veteran or veteran Marine. I actually had to go on to group chat and figure this out. Uh, you don't want to make a Marine mad. Uh, mm-hmm. Him and some good Samaritans went out there, pulled a guy out. Uh, some of the people suffered burns, but the driver is in c- critical condition. But thankfully alive to their good efforts. This was yeah. in uh, Auburn, Washington. Auburn, Washington, congratulations. I mean, cowbell for that guy running out there and doing this stuff. Marines always coming to the rescue, even for a truck driver lays it over on accident sitting there. Man. Well, I've heard a lot of people are like now looking for this Marine now to thank him or to to, to do whatever, but uh, he's been kind of elusive. It seems like he hasn't come forward. He doesn't really want the recognition. He was there to help, and he went out, unless the news has changed. Have you heard of You haven't heard of this driver coming forward yet, have you, Rooster? Uh, Not as of today, but... You know, Marines first to fight, big old oorah to this guy, and, you know, super fi. So how about you guys? You drive trucks all the time. You ever been in a really bad accident or, or seen a or – or what's the worst accident you've seen? Yeah, one of my go down uh, first I-80. months. Go right ahead, Justin. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, one of my first months uh, when I was over the road, um, I was in uh, St. Louis – and I uh, saw a real bad uh, rear end accident and the girl was trapped inside her car. We couldn't get her door open. And I had to take a knife and, you know, cut off her, uh, her seatbelt and pull her out the passenger side. Fortunately, you know, no injuries or anything, but she was pretty shaken up. Yeah, I bet. When you're stuck inside something like that, man, I'm claustrophobic. I can't imagine being stuck in there. Yeah. How about yourself, <laughs> sir? I mean, I, you know, you go down I-80 during the spring, you know, when the wind season's up, you see all kinds of trucks and trailers laid over. A, I didn't see the accident happen, but, you know, I ran across the guy that was on the side of the road, didn't have any help. So I kind of pulled in, pulled over, went and checked on him, you know, made sure he was all right and called a uh, state police, you know, get him out of there because it was, you know, winds blowing 30 or 40 and it was, you know, freezing conditions, you know. Well, hey, thank you for helping those people, boys. Very good work out of you, too. Uh, Postmaster, USPS Postmaster DeJoy, controversial figure, angered a lot of states with the decision on buying a bunch of new equipment. Justin, you sent this one to me. 16 states are suing USPS to stop the purchase of 148,000 delivery trucks due to the amount of gas used and the impact on the environment. What's going on here? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's all on the state level, not federal. You know, the EPA actually cleared uh, the purchase of these new trucks. So um, for whatever reason, these states, um, either they're unsatisfied with you know, the delivery operations at the Postal Service or they're just trying to you know, put their foot down against a uh, postmaster general they don't like. But, you know, they need new trucks. I mean, this, this fleet is ancient. They haven't been making the Grumman LLV since 1994. You know, these things get like eight miles per gallon. So do you ever race those them. things? Like you never really see like one of those mail delivery cars on the highway, right? You only see them on like regular, <laughs> regular roads. You ever race these? Things? I want to take them to the track. <laughs> not on the, not on the highways, but you'll see them on like state surface roads. Um, sure. You know, you're, you're not going to have a good time in them. Um, there's a YouTube channel, regular car reviews. They actually just uh, did like a joke review of one. Um, he said it drives like a, uh, Drives like a phone booth. <laughs> yeah, they're, very they're very aerodynamic. They're very aerodynamic. Especially with those, uh, those shaky walls. Now, uh, yeah. let's take a look at this. Let's go over to TikTok for a moment here. A man <laughs> regrets buying a cockatoo after discovering it likes to sing drowning pools bodies. Let's watch this video. All right, let's oh unmute this. on Craigslist, and it keeps on making these... It keeps on making these noises. <laughs> if you guys know what he's saying, could you tell me? What do you, what do you make of this? Hello, pretty bird. What you saying? (laughs) (laughs) What? Why does this annoy him? I can. He can't just listen to this all day. 
<laughs> no, you have to be careful with at parrots. So there's this place called An um, Angel Rescue League, right? Over in Jamaica okay. Plain in yeah. uh, Boston. Yeah. And there was a parrot in there that was like, I'm not going to repeat what it said, but there was it was like a racist parrot. It was oh, a racist oh, yeah, yeah, parrot. Yeah, you told me about that, yeah. You have to be careful. Like the owners, uh, his previous owner must have been listening to a lot of like drowning pool or something. You, you guys ever own any birds or parrots? You live on a farm over there, uh, Rooster. No, no, no. That it's, uh, we had a... Uh, little small bird i don't even know what kind it was but it they're not the worth the hassle they're i would i would take cats chickens guinea fowl anything over a little small bird in the cage having to clean up after one of those what about you justin you got birds hanging out at your house uh not at this house if we had one it would just be singing in canto all day long well what's the <laughs> uh, what, what bird is the most suspicious justin oh um, guinea fowls for sure. They don't have waddles. They have like little satellite dishes. They're just out there listening to everything. <laughs> and rooster, what do you say? Is it roosters? Uh, ah, pigeons, man. Pigeons are everywhere. They hide everywhere. <laughs> He's going you don't know they're there. They fly out of the roof and scare the stew out of you. Well, we're out of time on this show today. Go find him at Rooster BTU. Find him at Super Trucker. Find him at Vincent the Dude. Find me at Timothy Dooner. Follow at Back the Truck on Twitter. Go to backthetruckup.com to watch this on demand and get all of our content. Don't be a stranger. Tell them how to be. Hey, peace and love. Spread it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>